Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Crafty Simulations video. Now, a few videos ago, I mentioned uh, that I was going to be making some videos that were not involving some payware aircraft. Now, as you may have uh, worked out, I do have a bit of a soft spot for diamond aircraft. My favourite aircraft here on the sim is the Cows DA-42. And I have flown quite a few of the payware diamond aircraft. This time I've decided to do, create some videos around the aircraft uh, created um, by Asobo. They actually come with the sim, the different versions of the sim. So this video is going to be featuring the DA-62. Now I've not featured this aircraft in any way, shape or form in any of my content before, but I just want to compare this aircraft, which is a simulator based aircraft, to a payware base aircraft, i.e. in this case the Cows DA-42. So normally, back in, let's say, FSX days, I wouldn't have been interested too much in the aircraft that came with the sim. I just wasn't really interested. I didn't think the quality was there. Some of them were good, nah, some of them not so. And I'm just trying to work out whether this is the case for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Because when I purchased this simulator a few years ago, I was very interested in the aircraft that came with the sim. But obviously, like everyone else, I bought my first payware aircraft and never really looked back at the aircraft that Asobo have created that came with the sim. Now, obviously, Asobo have created, with quite a few different companies, other aircraft and steadily released them in the lifespan of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 under the uh, Legend series of aircraft. Uh, I can't remember exactly what. I mean, we've done quite a few of those aircraft, but these are aircraft that came with the sim probably on day release uh what first day release of the sim i didn't get this simulator on the first day um in fact i was actually quite late to this simulator um but like i said i want to see what the difference is between this aircraft and a fully created full fidelity in this case cows da42 so normally i don't like to compare too many different manufacturers of aircraft if the aircraft is the same uh in this case there's going to be a lot of comparison even though the aircraft is different this is a 62 and the cows version is a 42 um but in simulator terms there's going to be quite a lot of um comparisons so first of all let's have a look at the exterior of this aircraft and to be honest with you for the a simulator aircraft we'll call it it actually looks really good the tail registration gives it away that it's a simulator based aircraft uh we'll talk about the paint job in a minute but the aesthetics of this aircraft still look really really good for a simulator company based aircraft it still looks very very good and i think I think it stands up to uh, scrutiny when you're comparing it to a full fidelity payware version oops, um, of an aircraft. All the angles look good. I mean, the DA's, uh, sorry, the Diamond aircraft do make uh, aircraft look rather futuristic. They do stand out a little bit from whatever the holy heck that thing is. Um, so, yeah, ex externally speaking, it looks pretty darn good. The paint job is probably one of the best ones uh, that is in the collection of aircraft. I think you have five or six variants, um, colors, textures, repaints um, in the collection for the DA-62. Um, the last couple or last three are basically Microsoft colors. They're the, the, the white base colors with Microsoft Flight Simulator's logo on the side of it. And then you've got this... Um, zebra stripe um i have no idea what uh the person was painting <laughs> i don't know what this crucible um uh, logo is i haven't got a foggy haven't really looked into it too much but of all the aircraft that are of all the repaints i should say of the da62 i think this one looks pretty darn good um so let's move inside because that's where it's really going to be won or lost is this aircraft comparable to the cows da42 or payware aircraft in general so moving inside you will see a lot of things that we are we are very familiar with when it comes to 
uh, when it comes to uh, the DA42. And in some ways, actually, it's really, really good. Um, I do like that we get the actual diamond logo on the seats. Cows put their logo on the seats, um, on the headrests. Um, so, yeah, that's... I don't blame cows. That's that's brilliant. That's fantastic. They want to advertise it's their aircraft. Um, but I do like a bit of reality to it. So this is a diamond aircraft. We get diamond logos. And I always find myself looking at the leather seats to see if they look... Well, they come up to scrutiny. And to be honest with you, they look really, really good. Moving on to the light deck or the controls yeah they look pretty damn good i mean like i say it's very familiar to the da42 uh in the fact of we have two g1000 garmin systems obviously logoed up correctly as garmin uh this thing is different here lighting controls i don't believe are there normally that's for internal lights instrument and floodlights we got the main light panel up there that's correct uh comparable to the da42 Engine starts, I think, is correct. Fuel pumps, I like to say they're over here somewhere. Uh, we've got main electrical master switch, AV master switch, and pito heat there in correct place. Well, they I say correct places, it's correct places for a DA for uh, 62, but uh, yeah, it, it's fairly simple, similar to the cows version uh, obviously where the big difference is the ISA system is now over with the pilot we have the ECU system um, that's in a different place because that no that is supposed to be there the the ISA is supposed to be over there where the fuse panel is um, obviously fuse panel is not going to be functional in this aircraft again I always say this, it doesn't break the deal for me whether this is a payware aircraft or not, whether the fuse panel works or not, because to be honest with you, short of doing the checklist when I'm trying to start the aircraft up, I very rarely interact with uh, the fuse panel anyway. Um, so flap control again is in the usual place, uh, central pedestal trim is a little bit different this one is different because uh, i do believe the 42 is an actual wheel this isn't um you have to hold it in a position and as you can see the needle will move so that's different uh it doesn't quite work properly with my um trim settings uh when i've uh calibrated a button on my uh what have i got here water uh warthog thrust master stick thing i've forgotten the name of it yes Warthog. warthog even yeah yes try to get rid of words right uh so anyway moving down to parking brake and cabin heat and defrost there in the normal place throttle twin system trim system trim wheel that's the same we've got the fuel tanks down here they're functional stick looks pretty much the same as uh the da42 i wouldn't imagine there's too much difference between they're going to borrow diamond are going to borrow things from the 42 and put it in the 62 they're going to that's just the way they're going to do it um so yeah i think aesthetically it looks really really good uh one of the big downsides is we cannot open a canopy uh you can't do that with any of the aircraft that a serbo create uh that came with the sim i know there were a few mods that came out that add realism to uh various aircraft i think there was a realism mod for this aircraft although don't quote me on this i haven't i haven't downloaded it i don't know what it creates if it does exist um but uh yeah it's uh, i know i know other aircraft have realism mods uh the only downside i would potentially say and this is really nitpicking if i'm perfectly honest is this material here i know it's a sound dampening material i know that the a42 will have the same uh and obviously in flight similar terms it's just a texture that's being mapped over the um inside of the door here but you know it, it doesn't look it does the job I know what it is, I know what role it's supposed to fulfill, um, but it just looks like it was just pasted on there. I suppose it's got depth to it, it looks 3D. I mean, that's how good my reviews are getting. I'm going now into the reviewing, into the 3D side of uh, textures. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, it could look a little bit more worn, I suppose. I suppose that's another thing, this aircraft doesn't look worn i mean i know it's a newish aircraft i think these were first created in ooh, late 2016 i want to say uh 
2012, 2016, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so they are new aircraft. Um, so I suppose there isn't really many dirty aircraft out there. Uh, does this move the click spot? No, there isn't. So I don't know what that is. I think that's probably for the passengers anyway. Um, so yeah, all of the, other than that, I think this is actually really, really good looking aircraft. For the, an aircraft that comes with the simulator, I think it's really, really good. Uh, externally, it looks pretty darn good. Internally, it looks pretty darn good. So what we're going to do now is we are going to, well, we're going to take this for a flight. And we are at currently at a Wickenby airfield. And we are going to fly out of Wickenby, do a little circuit over Wickenby, and then we're going to head over to RF Waddington. It's a quite a short flight, but I've done a lot of flights out of uh, Waddington with the DA-42. So we're going to get the chance to, A, take this aircraft off a short-ish runway uh, with a nice hump in it, um, which usually helps getting the aircraft in the air. And when then we will be landing on... Uh, what R F Waddington, a nice big long concrete runway, which um, you know aids in my assistance. I haven't really flown this aircraft that much. I'm perfectly honest with you. So I think I've flown it once recently, just to check obviously everything worked. Um, and we shall see what she's like on approach into a big airfield. Now, what I have forgotten to do is set my controls up because I do believe I am not. Let's just try this. Yeah, I thought so. Um, I am going to be back in a minute when I set my controls up properly because my profile is not set up for a twin. So I shall see you back in a few seconds. So welcome back. I have just changed my profile and now we have independent throttles. I've got different profiles set up for the main aircraft that I'm flying. I do have a DA-42 profile, which will translate fairly well into the DA-62. Basically, uh, we've got independent throttle control now, which is useful on the ground. I mean, this aircraft taxi quite easily as it is. Um, so yeah, let's get the head tracking up and running. Uh, let's try and center that as well, so it's a little bit better. There we go. That's all good. Now, if I remember correctly, this aircraft has a rather... No, it's not this aircraft. I thought... Uh, I've been trying out different aircraft for different videos, and I'm sure this aircraft does not have a high pitch annoying squeak. Uh, it's the other aircraft that does. So, anyway, uh, let's get the battery switched on. And we can listen to the sounds of this aircraft. We'll turn the positional lights on. That should say that this is a live aircraft. Uh, positional lights, positional lights. Wait, stop doing that. It's a positional lights. Can you underneath it? I just cannot see it. Intrigued, I cannot find the lights. Okie dokie. That's weird. Uh, right, so we are going to need to have the avionics on because i need to see everything's up and running so we've got the g1000 system like in the da42 so this will be looking pretty much the same if not of the same um fuel system i need to have into uh, cross feed no i need it up into like that i do like that once you get past the um into the first option, the little locks switch, swing back, and obviously that means I cannot turn the fuel tanks off. Always useful. Right, so positional lights are on, batteries are on. Parking brakes are set. Uh, clear on the left side, obviously can't open the canopy to yell out clear prop, but uh, simulator will be alright. So, avionics are just powered up on the little pilot side, so... We'll turn on the main master for left engine. And we'll wait for the glow indicator to go out. As it's out. Clear on the left side, clear on the front, clear on the right. And let's go, let's start up. A very quiet aircraft. So now we have one engine running, uh, electronics are all set and happy IVRs are on. We can now clear that one to open up the map. Uh, right, so we'll start the right engine. So again, turn off them, turn on the master switch. Look out for the glow plug mark to go off. 
Glow plugs are out, and we are clear on the right. And good start on the right. Just running through my checks on my joystick to make sure the buttons are in the right position. Um, I should have really had the fuel pumps on, I suppose, but it is a warm day, so the aircraft's not really going to struggle to start at the moment. Uh, right, so we shall do a flap check. So we've got three positions up, mid, and landing positions. So we'll set into mid. And that is confirmed on both sides. Flaps going to landing. Confirmed on both sides. And flaps are retracted and confirmed on both sides. So, what are we going to do if I switch the views are correct? We'll stop the head from spinning at the moment, so we shall set a direct, if I remember how to do this. Uh, echo. Golf. X-ray. We'll go Waddington. Activate. That's our short little route. Um, can we do a procedure? Uh, we shall do that. Uh, runway 20. See, this is the problem. I don't know why it does this. I don't know whether this is the simulator or it is um, the particular scenery of which I have on um, my um, on my sim because I'm running a um, a version of RAF Waddington is a bit more accurate than the simulator's version. We do not have a runway. 20 left. Don't have that. We have 20 and we have. It's confusing, so there's the vision. Yeah, it's runway 20. I'm going to, I'm running this through in my head. Uh, right, so we do that. I want to do straight ins. Uh, minimums I want to set at. I don't know really what I've set my minimum supposedly at, but... Oh, let's set it 700 foot. We're not going to get that high on this route. Uh, straight final, runway 20. And that one... So I hope we don't have to... Set that, proceed. Yeah, it's not going to let me... I know in some of the G1000s you can uh, set this up to basically not activate at the time. Um, actually, we're not going to run a procedure. So if I go to that, we go to none, that's fine. Flight plan, we'll just keep the flight plan. We know the Waddington area, so we're fine on that. Uh, turn track IR back on again. Uh, right, so we're going to have our transponder, our code with Squawking 7000. We was already on that anyway, I do believe. Squawking code, we're going to put that to on. We'll put on some, put, change that to altitude reporting or when we get to the runway. That won't take too long. The runway is literally just across the way there, so we're happy. It's not far. Uh, we will have flaps set to take off on this one because it is a shortest runway. And we are a biggish aircraft. I don't know whether they ever had a DA-62 at Wickham, at, um, yeah, Wickenby, um, but they've got one now. Uh, so, flaps are checked, engines are checked. Route is checked and installed. Um, we're ready to go. We'll turn taxi lights on, see if they work. Yeah, see, they work just nicely. I always thought the wingy light was at the positional light was at the back end of the aircraft, but there you go, it could be wrong. So let's check everything works. Check the audio is good actually, because this is a quiet aircraft. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. So, I believe we're ready. So, coming up, parking brake and clear for taxi. We're not going to be using ATC.
We'll keep a low throttle setting while we are close to buildings. I think the sound's actually really good in this aircraft. I really do. Um, comparing them against the Cow's aircraft, I don't know what the engines are, I don't know whether they're literally the same engines as the DA-42. But they are very, very good. And I've got... I've got squeaky brakes. I love squeaky brakes. Squeaky brakes always, but always mean that you know when you're pressing the brakes. You may think that's mental, but... <laughs> sometimes in simulator you do like to know as an audio cue. So we're just going to position ourselves just off the main runway here. Give ourselves as much of a run up as we can. Now, I will say, um, before I did this video, a couple, well, it was a couple of days ago now, I did a firmware update on my rudder pedals. And... Um, this is done through Verpal, because I've got a set of Verpal pedals. And it completely deleted my profile in Simulator, which was extremely helpful. So, at the moment, I'm not running uh, the profile that I used, because I didn't, stupidly, take a photo of the settings that I used. Very weird, so, at the moment, I'm running a little bit of a tweet throttle, um, rudder profile setting. So, we'll see what that does to the actual flight. So, landing lights are on, positional lights are on. I can find the click spot. Fuel pumps are both set to on. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of rudder trim. If we normally need to for other aircraft. Right, so flaps are checked. Uh, we would do our ECU test. Um, if anyone knows for the DA-42, uh, you do an ECU test as part of your run-up. And uh, normally it's a central click spot just here to run up. You can't activate anything here, which I can do the alternate. Actually, we'll, we'll turn the alternators on. Actually, probably a good idea. Um, I can't do an ECU run up test. Um, I'm not going to have pitot heat on, so we're just going to live with that warning. It's plenty warm enough. It's summer for Christ's sake in, in England. So let's roll out to the runway. Clear on approach. So we are just running through the last of the checks. Everything looks correct. So let's go. Sit on the parking brake, or sit on the wheel brakes even, run the engines up. T's and B's are looking good. Let's go. Air speed's alive. There's 40. 50. 60. Here's the bump. Hey, hey. That throws the aircraft up. Tap the wheel brakes. Gear coming up. Just trying to trim the aircraft out. That's coming up. Passing 110. I always find these aircraft are very, very quick. So let's make a little lap around Wickenby.
probably should be squawking altitude now. Could have really set that before I got off the ground. So far, so far, this aircraft, if I can find the click spots, not the taxi lights, it's actually really, really good. Sounds exactly like I would probably expect a diamond aircraft to sound. These are executive toys, I suppose, for want a better word, very expensive toys. We'll just set our tanks to cross feed now. Now we're in the air. We're not going to be using autopilot, we're just going to fly a little bit around where we are, so we want to be accelerating now, I suppose. We are slowly increasing our speed while increasing our altitude. We do have, as far as navigational goes, we do have a fully functioning G1000 system. So if you are familiar with the G1000 system, especially the same one that comes with the DA42, then you will be more than at home with the DA62. I would say the controls in this aircraft are a little bit sensitive. I'm always having to trim the aircraft out pitch seems to be quite sensitive. The rudder is still sensitive, that could be just down to my um, ineptness in when to do an update or not. For a flight simulator aircraft, I think this is really, really good. I remember the days when having FSX, and they came with a batch of aircraft, obviously, when the sim was installed. There was only one version of the simulator. It's not like today when you have different versions with different price ranges. And the aircraft were good. They were acceptable, I think is the technical term. Um, they taught you the basics of of the flight simulator itself uh, and navigation. Graphically, there were not obviously a patch on the various flight sim companies when they were coming out with their aircraft, but they were all right. And I think this is the good. This is the good thing. If you're buying a flight simulator, it's an, it can be an expensive hobby. You know, just buying the simulator is expensive. I think mine was about sixty pounds. I'm sure it was. I think there is an there is a hundred plus pound version of the sim, which comes with all the 
bells and whistles uh, from a sobo. And that's a lot of money when you take into account the fact of, well, I'm going to be buying some payware aircraft and I've got my controls to buy uh, and all that stuff. It's a, it's a big outlay. But if you want to buy the flight simulator and just fly some of these aircraft, they're good. They're really, really good. And it gives you time to absorb the flight simulator and what it's all about. So we've got Waddington in view now, it's just off our nose. So I am going to turn my landing lights off, I'm not going to make a landing approach just now. We're going to go down the runway and then go into the circuit. So landing lights are on, track is going nuts. Turn on the fuel pumps. I always like the G1000 avionics. I think they work really well. It makes the cockpit a lot, a lot more simpler because all your communications and navigation um, and 3D screens are all put into one screen. I wish the fly simulator would stop doing that. So we're gonna break early and go into our pattern. Flaps coming down to approach. Again, good sounds there. We've got um, wind noise off the flaps. Now they've been extended. sounds. Always good visibility after a diamond aircraft. So, final check, so landing lights are on, flaps down one stage, gear down three green, fuel tank selected correct, fuel pumps on left and right are on. Landing, uh, landing flaps on this runway is plenty long enough. The 
slipping in onto finals. Away, but uh, we can backtrack up the runway. Brakes are certainly ferocious. differential foots to get the aircraft to swing around. So, there we are. Welcome to RAF Waddington. Taxi lights are on, landing lights are off. Fuel pumps are off. And clear on taxiway. So, as we trundle back to the parking area for GA aircraft here, my thoughts on this aircraft. Is it worth... Get, well, not getting rid of your payware aircraft, but is it an alternative to a payware aircraft? And in this case, is it a good alternative to the Cows DA-42? And I've got to say, yes, it is. Has it replaced my being the best aircraft? You know, has it beaten the DA-42? No, of course it hasn't. DA-42 by Cows is a fantastic all-round aircraft and is still continuously being updated. This aircraft, I doubt, has been updated for quite a while. Um, it is fully functioning in all the bits and pieces that you actually need, I navigational equipment, uh, all the main buttons actually do something, uh, the engine controls, electrical controls, flap controls, lighting, internal as well as external, yeah okay we don't have the ECU controls, that's quite a big thing for, um, for Diamond Aircraft is the uh, twin ECU system. But it's a damn good aircraft and you know if you if you want to fly something a little bit different if you want to fly something a little bit different it's really really good so right fuel pumps are off correct tanks are set to that correct so we'll have the right engine turned off please and that's come off good animation left engine coming off again good animation so we can have avionics come in so we'll have taxi light now off positional lights is now off fuel pumps are off av is now coming off let the stimulator catch up on that and main battery is coming off. So, as I said, is this a good aircraft? Yes, it is. Externally, 
internally graphics are really really good i haven't seen too many issues the sounds of it are pretty damn good if a little bit on the low side i think the, the engine sounds could be a little bit higher uh being that you are right next to the engines but you know it's, these are very f new aircraft so maybe we'll put it down to soundproofing inside the canopy inside the cockpit area um again i say all the bits and pieces inside seem to work that you need fuse panel doesn't work not a deal breaker for me um i do believe there are repaints for this aircraft uh, on flightsim.to there is i think a realism mod for this aircraft i don't know what it changes but i do believe it's there again on flightsim.to i'm sure i saw it somewhere um so yeah i think as a flight simulator aircraft it's really really good and is worth a punt if you are interested in twin engine aircraft and maybe you're looking into purchasing a twin aircraft a twin engine aircraft um for your flight sim don't have to be a diamond aircraft um and you're just wanting to see how twin engine aircraft respond and work in the flight simulator well this is a good example if this is in your flight simulator um because i'd don't know whether it comes out for every different version but other than that i think it's fantastic i think it's really really good i think it's well created and i will look forward to reviewing future diamond aircraft by a sobo in future content so stay tuned on that because i am going to be doing the single engine variants as well um so if you have any questions or comments about this aircraft bang them below i will answer them as soon as i can and i will see you guys and girls in a future microsoft flight simulator video very, very soon.